Honorable Leader of the Opposition, the Chair rules as follows, and I can say it's in accordance with what I intimated earlier on. Standing Order 14 sets out the arrangement of the business, and 14.1J sets out um, exactly when matters relating to privilege may be raised, which is correctly at the stage we're now at. Standing Order 28, however, sets out the procedure for how a matter of privilege may be raised. So the option, as I see it, is twofold. The matter can be raised now and the full process continued. However, if that is not the desire, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, and your desire remains that you want to deal with it later on, then any member would move a suspension of standing order 14 for it to be dealt with later on um, in the proceedings. If it's moved by a member of the back bench, it would require a seconder. If it's moved by a member of the government, it would not um, require a seconder. Um, those are the findings of the chair. I recognize the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Madam Speaker, my mind is of a, at the same position I, as when I rose earlier to bring the attention to the chair. Madam Speaker, I never bother with, with such things as these, these sort of Facebook and, and social media stuff. I have no time for it. But this photo matter is inexcusable. It is a deliberate attack on my character, which has been carried out by members of the opposite party with involvement of other people. And I, as I said, I don't want to take up any more time at the House. I'd rather the House get through this particular important business. And later on, I state my position now that I will move the motion at that time to deal with it. Leader of the Opposition, then the next step would be for a motion to be moved for the suspension. Um, one moment, please, for the suspension of standing order 14, um, bearing in mind that if that motion fails, then we would revert still to the status quo once you have raised a matter that we would have to deal with it at the stage. I just want members to be clear with the procedure as I... Are you saying it. that we must do that at this point or at the point that I intend to raise it? According to Standard Order 28, this is Standard Order 14, I beg your pardon. This is the appropriate time to raise it um, in the proceedings. If you want to do it later, as you, as you have requested, then that would necessitate um, um, suspension of Standard Order 14 to allow you to raise it at a later time. So you have two options. You can raise it now as you have just done the intention, and of course there are several more steps to follow if you proceed to raise it now. If you do not want to raise it now, it, the only how that the chair could allow it not to be raised now, if a motion is brought and seconded, if it's by a non-government bench member, or if it's by the government, no seconder is required, a vote is taken. If the motion um, passes in the affirmative, then it can be put on for a later time whatever the time the motion stipulates. If the motion fails and you still intend to discuss it, it would have to be discussed now. Is that an explicit motion in writing that you, that you require, or, or do I formulate the motion and, and we move from there? Under 24. It says any member may then um, move a motion relating to that matter of privilege which shall take precedence over other business. So the motion can obviously, based from the sequence how it's stipulated in a standing order, be moved on the floor of the House. A member can raise to move the motion. So I'm still not clear. If I raise it now, what happens then? Because I don't want to, as I said, do anything to impede the business that is at hand. And so I prefer to let it go until after the budget debate, at some point, I will raise it. And what I'm saying, and, and I'll try to be as clear as I possibly can, what I'm saying is that in order for you to raise it at a time other than it's stipulated in Standard Order 14, 
it has to be done through a motion that is moved here and passed in the affirmative. I have no discretion as chair to allow it to go down, neither does the Premier or any other single member through a majority um, voting yes in favor of the motion for it to go. You can do that honorably with opposition. If a motion emanates from either yourself or any other member and it is in a negative and you still intend to pursue the matter of privilege, then you would have to proceed at this time. So there's only those two options. There's no motion now, so you can't. The only reason why this um, extended discussion is ensuing is because of the request to deal with it later. If that request was not there, we would, would have been um, proceeding in accordance with standard order 28, where I would have asked you to state the um, purpose and the grounds to deal with it. Okay, Madam Speaker, I think I, I get the drift of where you're going. Um, I'm not going to raise it at this time because I believe that we should allow members to continue the important debate. And I hope that the House will give as much indulgence to me as that so that I can raise it at a further date. This, this, might, this might now might be me, but it could be anybody at any point, and I don't condone it, no matter who it is. So I, I, I'm not going to raise the motion at this point. I will raise it another time, and I will raise the motion then. And if the House rejects the motion at that time, well, it rejects it. Hopefully, it will allow me to state my position at that time. I might not ask for anything to be done. I might just ask that it, I, it be it, so that it is included in the record. So um, as I said, I'm not going to because I believe that we need to get finished with the budget debate. That's how I feel. Madam. On, one minute, sir. I, I just want to make sure, I, I'm, I will recognize you in a moment, Honorable Premier, please. I just want to make sure that all members are understanding what the chair has said. The matter for the intent to raise under privilege has been made um, in its preliminary stages. Notice have been given to the presiding officer, the speaker. The standing orders in its current forms allow whichever member that's raising it to deal with it here and now. If for whatever reason, the member raising the matter on privilege or alleged privilege does not wish to deal with it in accordance with standing order 14, that can only be accomplished if a motion emanates on the floor of this house, specifically asking for it to be dealt with at a later time, today or in the future. If that does not happen, then it's tantamount to the intention to raise it being negated and or withdrawn because it does have a, a, a prerequisite to raising it under 28.1 when it says a member who wishes to raise a matter which he believes affects the privileges of the House shall, it's mandatory, do so at the first available sitting of the House. Um, which has been done today because the record would reflect that apologies were given for the Honorable Leader of the Opposition um, on the day in between the matter occurring as he was ill. So this would be the first available sitting that the Honorable Leader of the Opposition has to raise it. I just want to make sure that I have sufficiently elucidated on that matter so that um, no member will feel that their rights have been thwarted in any form or fashion, I'm just stating what the standing order says, and because as far as certainly this chair is concerned, it's the first time it has arisen, I want to make sure that we don't set a precedent um, that is outside the local standard or the jurisdiction of the chair. So if members still aren't clear, I'm more than happy to try to explain it, but I've done the best that I can to try to explain what the standing orders are. Um, I recognize the Honorable Premier at this time. Madam Speaker, I would have stayed completely out of this except for the grave allegations made by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition in which he has charged that this was the taking of this photograph and presumably its dissemination was an attack on him by members of the, I think he said the opposing party or the governing party. Anyhow, he met this side. 
Um, Madam Speaker, that, those are grave allegations, and I presume he has, or, or he will have evidence of this fact. But, Madam Speaker, the standing order in question 28, which allows members to raise matters which they believe affect the privileges of this House, is set out in terms which convey or are intended to convey the fact that these matters are to be dealt with with expedition. And that is why it says the member should raise it at the earliest sitting of the, of the House. Uh, it is not, Madam Speaker, I believe, good enough to make um, an allegation such as the Honourable Leader of the Opposition has made and sit down and say, well, I, I don't want to deal with this now. I want to deal with it when, they, um, when the proceedings are over. If there's a matter which affects the privileges of the House which he uh, wants to deal with, then, Madam Speaker, I believe the proper process is for him to do so and let the House and everybody else hear the basis for, for what, he is, what he's alleging and not to just raise it and sit down and say, I'll deal with it when I'm good and ready. No, Madam Speaker, that's I recognize what I'm saying. the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Ma Madam Speaker, I am ready to deal with it. All I am saying is that I would have rather we continue the debate of the House, get that over with, and, and so that that is cleared. Because that is, that is, I, I, well, this is important to me. I, that is important to get the country's budget out of the way. And that's what I was, that's what I was um, saying. Now, Madam Speaker, if the House wants to deal with it, I, will, I can deal with it. And when the, member talk, when the Premier talks about um, a grave accusation, I did say the, the taking of the photo was a deliberate attack on my character and the publication of it. I didn't have to get into all, that I, all the words that I can use. I could do that in a motion. But it is the publication, and of course it had to be the taking of it here, because the, the publisher, Madam Speaker, to say, to reply to the Premier, the publisher of it on his Facebook, and the person that sent it to Cabinet, both of them were sent it to Compass, both of them were not here. So it had to be taken for somebody inside this house. Honorable, inside this chamber. Honorable Leader of the Opposition, in order to move this process forward, there are two options before the House. Um, the matter that you gave intention to raise can be done at this time. Mr. Chair will um, edit in subject to your stating what the, pur the purpose is you wish to raise and the grounds. Um, failing that, the only other option is to move this expansion of standing order 14. Can I have an indication from you, sir, which of those you wish to exercise? Madam Speaker, I thought the House, and I repeat this again, I thought the House wanted to move along and felt, I didn't hear any nays or see any, any expressions that member would not agree to it, that they would prefer us to move along with the budget and I take it at a different time. If members think that I should do so now, well, I can do so. You're the only one. You're the only one member. Leader of the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, in order for the Chair to um, have a stare, a direct stare as to the will of the House, it's through a motion. So unless the motion is moved and a vote, I have no way of knowing so, so what the now. member, one, one minute please, what the um, members want to do. I mean, I, I see body language, but as far as the chair is concerned, I'm blind to that. I have to get a motion and a vote on it. So if, I'm, if I speak to this now, are you saying I still have to move a motion or I speak directly to it now? Well, basically, so far you've given me your intention. Um, you've stated the matter which you propose to, to raise, and basically the next thing would be I would call upon you, sir, and you'll briefly state the grounds in which you believe the matter you raise affects the privilege of the House. At that stage, then the ball is thrown back in my court, and then I have to exercise a discretion whether or not the matter you raise affects the privilege of the House. Madam Speaker, thank you. Madam Speaker, as I said, can, this matter... 
Can I just have your indulgence for one more minute? Um, Madam Clark, out of the abundance of caution, um, can you please ensure that the hands are typists, although she's ill, that arrangements are in place to um, record, because I'm sure members of the House, including the mover, may wish to see the, hand, the hands are in an expeditious fashion. Um, thank you for your indulgence. Leader of Opposition, please proceed. Madam Speaker, I have already said that I think the taking of the photo and the publication of it is a deliberate attack on my character as a member of this honorable house. I believe it interferes with a member of this house as it interferes with myself. Certainly, it must be against the standing orders because the, the, the speaker um, allows photos at any point to be taken. So, Madam Speaker, that is the, the points that I, I raise. I, I, I feel that it is a direct attack to, to, make, to bring ridicule on me, and I will get into the debate. I'm only stating the grounds now that's, that that's what you need. So those are the grounds. Now, do I continue with the debate? Twenty-eight three sets out the next step in the procedure as the presiding officer shall then state whether in his opinion the matter may or not affect the privilege of the house. So at a very minimum, um honored leader of the opposition, I need you to convince the chair what the privilege is. And then at that time I will make a decision um whether I do it here or whether I need to, to go further. Go further and the consideration as to what constitutes privilege. Madam Speaker, I have been elected eight times. When this house is prorogued in 2017, God willing, I would have served for over 32 years. In that time, I've seen dirty politics, but nothing of the kind that has grown and is perpetuated in recent times. And it's not politics that simply comes from this house, as some people would like the whole world to believe. A lot and a vast amount of it is perpetuated from the outside. If I was easily discouraged, Madam Speaker, I would walk away and give in to the haters, the jealous, vicious, and just those who are plainly political opportunists. A lot of them around today. I have to say that this attempt has brought more ridicule on me, and that was what was meant, what it was meant to do. I will not stand down under that kind of political machinations. Madam Speaker, as I said, I never bother with these Facebook things and all the things that are being said. Some people send them to me and that's how, I don't even see, I know I got a, a Facebook, but I don't even get into it. I, 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 somebody else looks at it for me. So I don't have that kind of time. Don't have that kind of resources. And, and I, as I said, Madam Speaker, I have served this house and my people diligently, regardless of how some members may feel or any member of the public, the majority of my constituency feels that I do. The expose of what I believe is a doctored photo trivializes this legislature. And when they think it will help to erode my public and private standing, it only holds this assembly to being criticized. That is horrible enough because it is all done at the expense of those of us who are diligent. The Compass, I want to read that editorial into the record, Madam Speaker. And I think the House might have it. So ordered, can I have a copy, please? I don't, I don't have it. I intended to get it from the House, but 
I didn't recognize that you were going to into this process at this time. But I want to read it. Sarge, could you see whether you could obtain a copy of the compass and let the yes, chair the compass that is. and other members have a copy of it? Yeah, right. You know, you know, Premier, you shouldn't talk because the only one that writes the compass is your, or wrote the editorial compass is your now press secretary. Madam Speaker, the, the, I, the, the side is going to get it. I, I, I want to stop and give a minute so that I can can proceed with with that aspect of it. No, I I I have my route to go. We should have we should have waited till afterwards. I know. We will wait for the side to come in so that the chair and other interested members can have in their possession a copy of the evidential document. Thank you for your indulgence, and I thank the House, Madam Speaker. This is what the compost says about it, and this is what I say. It implicates all of us and makes all of us look bad, and we should be mindful that, that people in this island are about that. They are about making us look as bad as possible. What's the date of the paper? Today, uh, yesterday's paper, Tuesday, May 20, 26, 2015. And the compost, which is, which is a... Is, I think an accurate accurate um, editorial, and it says a snapshot of unacceptable behavior on the house floor. And I, I, I quote, if it had happened in a classroom, it likely would have been treated as bullying. In fact, cyber bullying. It had all the ingredients. It was meant to be hurtful. It was done anonymously, and it was distributed and ultimately posted on social media. We refer to the photo which was taken on the floor of the Legislative Assembly last week. It showed leader of the opposition, McKeever Bush, purportedly asleep at his post in a most unflattering pose. <laughs> the, <laughs> the photograph then appeared on the Facebook page of Chris White, a highly visible and highly vocal PPM supporter. It was subsequently sent to the Cayman Compass by Premier Alden McLaughlin's press secretary, Tammy Chisholm. The image drew the, the ire of the House Speaker, Juliana O'Connor Conley, who said the taking of such photograph is in, controversion, in contravention of legislative assembly rules. The Cayman Compass published a short article, but not the photo on the incident because Ms. O'Connor Conley addressed the issue publicly on the House floor. The angle of the photograph taken of Mr. Bush clearly indicates it was taken from the floor of the Legislative Assembly and more specifically from the area of the government bench. We do not know who took the photo, but we have submitted the digital file to two independent experts for analysis in the United States. They have already extracted meaningful information from deeply embedded uh, metadata in the image that may leak the photo to the device and ultimately to the individual who took it. On Friday, we queried Premier McLaughlin twice, asking directly if he himself had taken the picture or if not, whether he could enlighten us as to who did. He chose not to address those questions. Whoever took the photograph then passed it on personally 
our true and intermediary to Mr. White, who in turn made it available globally via his Facebook account. The incident of all this, we believe, was clear, incontrovertible, and ultimately successful. It was to embarrass Mr. Bush, to expose him to ridicule and disparagement, both in Cayman and beyond. It was amateur, gutter politics, not reflective of the kind of behavior we should expect from the hallowed halls of our honorable house. Which brings us to the following observation. Compass reporters spend so much time in the Legislative Assembly that government legitimately could be charging us rent. The behavior we have observed, but too often in the past have not reported, is often appalling. We have witnessed a number of the lawmakers sleeping in the Legislative Assembly chamber during proceedings. For the record, Mr. Bush denies he was asleep in the photograph now on Facebook. He is opening his own probe into the origin of the photograph and whether it was digitally altered. Members often occupy their time reading newspapers, texting on their smartphones, or chatting amicably among themselves, paying scant attention to the floor debate. More importantly, even though their attendance in the Legislative Assembly during meeting is one of their primary functions as elected representatives, all too often the members are either not in the chamber during debates or absent altogether. For those lawmakers who engage in such behavior, shame on them. For those of us at the Compass who have not reported this behavior more vigilantly, shame on us. End of quote. That's the Cayman Compass of Tuesday, May 26, yesterday. Madam Speaker, now let us look at the facts of the matter. I came to the House and was here in my seat for the start at least five minutes before the House convened on Honorable Leader of the Opposition, can you just proceed to complete the procedure and lay it on the floor, the oh, document? Well, Madam Speaker, I beg to lay that uh, editorial on the table of this Honorable House. So ordered. Is the editorial that I'm asking to be laid, not the entire paper? I'll probably come to it. Huh? I'll put one. Please big, continue. Big one. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Original copies being laid on the table, Madam Speaker. As I said, Madam Speaker, I came to the House on the 20th, that was Wednesday, and was here in my seat for the start at least a few minutes before the House convened. Prayers were laid. Papers were laid. The Premier then rose to pay tribute, after which I rose, as allowed by the Speaker, to pay tribute to Dr. Edlin, Mr. Tommy Hurlston, Mr. Godet, Mr. James Sonneboy Borden, and Mr. Perry George, and to all who had uh, family expressed condolences to all family who had had loved ones pass away, including the East End member. After that, I went straight to my budget and throne speech debate as I was called upon to do so. I had no moment, no minute, no time to doze in this assembly. There was no pause. The speaker took a break and reconvened. At that minute, I, I think it was just about 12 o'clock, and I thought that it was a lunch break. Anyway, Madam Speaker, the speaker took the break and then reconvened. I was just a bit late on re-entering the chamber, and whilst members was inside, and I drew the attention that there was not a quorum, and I was given time to get to my seat by the speaker to continue my debate. There was no time 
for me to sit down to take a break, nor a minute to doze. I continued my debate and ended at about 10 minutes to 1 p.m., I believe. The speaker took the lunch break. Madam Speaker, I did not come back to the chamber when the House was reconvened after the lunch break as I left the precincts to attend to matters in preparation for my public meeting that night of Wednesday the 20th in Prospect. I did not come back that day at all. I therefore had no chance to doze in the precincts of this chamber or in this chamber on that day and I don't know of any time that I ever fell asleep in this honorable house. If members think that McKeever is sleeping, they're making a big mistake. That's why my eyes were doctored in that photo, Madam Speaker, because they know my eyes was open. I might rest. Sometimes I close my eyes, but I'm not asleep. That photo was carried on the Facebook of a member of the PPM executive, and his actions, I think, brings the PPM Expo into question. Do they conform to this type of bully practices? More so was the Premier's press secretary, no less, what was she doing with it? But Mr. White was not in attendance here on that day. Neither was Mrs. Chisholm, the Premier's press secretary, who, Madam Speaker, is a seasoned journalist and a former editor of the Caymanian Compass. So that photo was put out in malice and meant to damage, smear, and hold me as the leader of the opposition up to ridicule, to malign, to degrade, and for me to be looked at in a bad a light and a don't care attitude manner. It continues, Madam Speaker, the smearing campaign that has gone on in these islands by some of them. This is just part of it. Madam Speaker, as far as I'm concerned, he that diggeth a pit shall fall in it. These are the kind of attacks or acts that cause political warfare amongst parties. And as if I were of the same mentality, Madam Speaker, and as bad as they want people to believe I am, then I would be retaliating. But I am not what they have been trying to stick on me. No. But that kind of skullduggery, do nothing to enhance this house or indeed our young and fledgling party system that so many want to see done away with. I don't care who do it, on which side it is done to, I know that it is not right. I do not condone it. I, I know I don't get involved. And I have at no time encouraged it, nor would I seek to condone it in any shape or form. It's too much that goes out on social media that is not true, that is uh, inflated, that is, Madam Speaker, made to ridicule people wrongly, things that are said without people trying to find out. Well, why did that happen? Or how that happened? No. They prefer to get out there and say all manner of things. And people on outside don't care about members of this honorable house. Sorry to say, far too many of them don't. They don't. And then there are those that want to see this house carry on in a judicious and proper manner. And so I would not condone that. I don't get on Facebook. I don't get in there. I try not even to talk to Wendy Lady from CNS, who's persistent, writing you and, and, and challenging you and, and telling you she's going to write it anyway and all sorts of things. But so give you a chance to say something. 
No, I, I pay them no mind, Madam Speaker, because at the end of the day, it is my actions that causes me to be elected here. What I do all year round, all four years, Madam Speaker, I don't wait until election to try to get elected. I treat people, all people, as best as I can and do as much as I can for them. And I believe other members do the same. There are members that I would swear for in this honorable house and some on that side, Madam Speaker, that I know do their job in trying to represent people. So, Madam Speaker, and what I can say about Mrs. Chisholm is that my press secretary would have never have been used to do such an act, nor do I believe would he be so inclined. He's a decent law-abiding man who observed all of the rules that we are governed by while he was my press secretary, even when he came to this honorable house. Now, they've tried in every conceivable way to make me look as bad as possible. I believe that this publication of this doctored photo, Madam Speaker, is a serious contempt reflecting on me, but also on all members, and so, Madam Speaker, upon this honorable house itself. Such an act and an attack on any member is calculated to diminish the respect due to the house and myself and any member and lessen our authority in the community. This affects the house and the deranged minds that did it and cohorted with all of them that was involved knows quite well that it is out of malice towards this member that it was done. Now look, look at the photo, Madam Speaker. I don't know if you have one. I have a blow that one, Madam Speaker. I'm going to lay that on the table of this honorable house. But it's the same as you have, and I will so order. give you one, and one for the speaker, and one for anybody that want to frame it. No, he don't need it. He saw it. First of all, Madam Speaker, I do not drink water from a glass. When you look at that photo, not the one that we have, look at the one that I understand that the house got, which is a copy of the video. And see if there is not a bottle of water on that video. The video that from GIS, from the whole um, day's proceedings. And, and see if on that video, Madam Speaker, whether the bottle of water is there. No, it is not. When you look at the, the photo that was publicized, Madam Speaker, what we see is a glass turned upside down and one that is half full of water, a smaller glass. I don't drink water in here, Madam Speaker. I don't know whether, how that glass got there and how a second glass got there half full of water and there was no bottle of water when the real picture shows the bottle, which members in this house know these on my table and on another member's table. And then there, Madam Speaker, look at my shirt collar. I know, I know what the shirt is. My, if when, you, when I lean my head on the side, Madam Speaker, I, I have no room to play because I put on a little bit of weight. They might have said that in 2008 when I had my surgery that my neck would have been all over the place with the collar, but not now. There is no room for it, but look at it. Look at it. The neck is different. My shirt collar is very tight, so no space for any gap between my collar and my neck, no matter which side I twist it right or left. In order to make my eyes appear to be closed, they, I, as far as I can see, they doctored the photo and in so doing, cropped the lenses from my glasses. Look at it, Madam Speaker. 
to the extent that the right leg, the same glasses I have on, the right leg and the right nose rest is left in place, but the right and left lenses are totally removed. The right side of my face, look at it. Look at it. The jawline is so distorted. Whoever done the, 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 the doctoring, done a poor If there was a health doctor, I would be dead. So, Madam Speaker, this is not fun. And I am not want to have to have raised this matter. You know, I, in fact, would have rather let it go, Madam Speaker, and say that those persons, I have never paid them boys, because that's what they are. I've never paid them any mind, and perhaps that's why they so viciously pursue me, because I don't try to take them on. Let them have their fun. Let them do what they want to do. I treat them as the children they are. That's what I treat them as. I pay them no mind. So I would not have paid them any mind. They have said so many things about me. It's like water on a duck's back. Pay them no mind. The only one I pay them mind to, if the premier says something. And he's not going to have time for that. So, Madam Speaker, all I say to this house is, I understand there were other photos. I know seen them of other people. I don't cotton to that. I don't do, don't delve into it. I don't believe in it. I don't think it should be happening in this house at any time. No. No. So, Madam Speaker, it's left up to this house. But I believe that we should take a stand. We should take a stand. It not only affects us, you know, Madam Speaker. Remember this, those of us that have adult children? It affects them. Even to those that have children that are 8, 10, 12 years old going to school. It affects them. Grandchildren, that might, you have, might have children. I have grandchildren, 14, 12, and 9. And that kind of thing needs to stop. We should never condone it, no matter what is said about it, not, we shouldn't condone it. If you want to make fun of each other, that's good. Caymanians can do that good and don't feel anything bad about it. We can make fun of ourselves at times. I certainly can, of myself, and laugh about it. No, but we can't allow this house to be brought into continuous disrepute with, with, with editorials from Compass and other places and going all over the world, and you go to meetings and people say, boy, you had a good nap. Yeah, I wish I had. Madam Speaker, it's left up to the House. I recognize the Honorable Premier. Madam Speaker, I just want to say a few things with respect to this matter. Madam Speaker, listening to the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Honorable Premier, it's my intention to now take the um, luncheon break and I do that in accordance with standing order 28 as the next step seeing that a motion has not yet been moved by the leader of the opposition um, there's no room for debate so um, I would take the luncheon break and reconvene at 3 o'clock because I now have to move into the next stage to decide whether or not um, there's a matter of privilege and whether it has been um, satisfied under 28.3. If I move that it may influence the privilege of the House, then we'll go to the next stage where a motion is moved and everybody can debate and have their say and, uh, and the sequence that members wish. If I rule that it's not affected, that terminates the matter. The motion basically in, in accordance of 28.4 is a motion relating to the matter of privilege um, once I've ruled and shall take precedence over the business at that stage, we'll be debating um, that they, there has been a breach of the pri a privilege and move on to the other stages. So it would just be a specific motion on privilege. 
So we'll, we'll take the luncheon break now. And um, because of the matter at hand, I would ask members indulgent for us to reconvene at 3 p.m.